this is going to be a Ramy video. There is no doubt about that. But I'm going to share with you how I personally got the job at Aer Lingus, Ireland. And Aer Lingus, if you didn't know, is a very reputable airline company that is based here in Ireland. It flies all around Europe, Canada, America, has really nice direct flights to a lot of American cities. And it's, yeah, it's grown really fast. So, this is how I got a job there as cabin crew. I initially looked at the recruitment dates on the Aer Lingus Careers website and I found one day in Dublin, which is perfect because I live nearby. I printed out all the necessary forms, which included two reference sheets, one from my college teacher and one from anybody else. I use an old employer. Another sheet included all my personal details, so that's everything that cross panel with my passport. That brings me to 13. My passport, I had to bring that on the day. Then I also had to fill out a declaration sheet, which kind of had like blood, facial tattoos, piercings, etc. Just to like declare it so they know for future sake. With all my sheets established and organized, I went to the official place where the recruitment day was going to take place. This was the Radisson Blue Hotel, right outside of Dublin Airport. Once I reached the hotel, I went to the reception and was guided where I needed to go. And this was a bit of a maze, this hotel, because it's pretty big. So when I reached the proper area, it turned out to be an Aer Lingus room with about 40 seats available and three Aer Lingus staff. One of them was a cabin crew member and two of them were working in HR, that kind of side of things. There was refreshments, tea, coffee, biscuits, and what I did was, I went up to the front girls, the airline staff, gave her my documents, signed off a piece of paper saying that these are my documents and I confirm it. Then I was seated. I was seated for about 1 hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. If it's unknown to you, this waiting time is crucial to whether you actually get the job or not. Because you kind of need to hear me out on this, but the, the waiting time is kind of a test for them. A test if you can remain professional for a waited slot in time, which was 1 hour and 20 minutes for me. You had to remain seated, remain kind of calm, you had to smile. You need to talk to the people beside you, be sociable, but nowhere to stop and end the conversation so you don't extend it, don't like let your emotions get ahead of you, don't shout, don't get overexcited. You need to keep your tones low and one other thing, you can never look at your phone. I had my phone always in my pocket and I never once took it out, even though there was a free Wi-Fi and everybody was on their phone. And this is what I did personally. They didn't tell me to do this. I wasn't God of Iron teacher to do this, but I just felt like this was the best way to do it. And well, in the end, got me the job, I think. So after the wait, two girls and I were called by a staff member and we followed her through the hotel. We took a lift, went upstairs and went to the main interview rooms. And these were regular just hotel rooms that were transformed with a big round desk. Inside the room, each desk had two workers, the departments all varied. There was free water and they had A4 sheets, maybe like four sheets each. And these were the questions that you're going to be answered and they just fill out what they taught. I'm going to skip some of the details like waiting outside of the interview rooms, etc. And just get to the interview. The questions were solely on how would you react to a particular quote. The questions were solely about how would you react to a particular situation? So, this all seems rather important to me, so I'm going to talk about what the actual questions were. They were kind of like, how would you react to an angry customer? Can you work long hours? What if you had to work early mornings, like wake up at 2 a.m. to be for your shift at 4? It was essentially every single question, every single bullet point that they outlined on their website for this job offer. Every single one. I think there was like seven overall. And this is, this is the thing. You want to elaborate and use the example of your own experience in each one of them, but you cannot interchange them. So let's say for one of them, I talked about how I work in the hotel as a waiter and I was able to deal with a lot of people with you know, a tight time frame. There's another one dealing with complaints and unhappy customers. I use my photography experience as that. So I had to like interchange everything that I've learned in my past and put them into this airliner's profile. It wasn't too hard, but you really did need to be prepared for this. The other questions were not that 
hard, but you did also need to prepare for them. So they're like, what do you want? Why do you want to work for airliners? What do you know about the company? Give details, etc. Not too hard. I just looked at the website, the about page, and yeah, it took like two minutes of preparation. Really handy. So, how long was the interview? It took around 25 to 30 minutes from the time I was seated till I left the interview room. To be completely honest, if you ever had an interview in your past, you can probably like guess of the occurrences I described, but this is a juicy part that I don't think anybody else knew and I didn't really know myself but I can't trust my intuition. So, I returned from the interview to the main room where we first met and we had tea and coffee and I was seated. I was told I could go home after the interviews because no other fitness exams were going to be taking that place and I'll go into them in a bit. However, I remained hopeful and sat for around 20 minutes talking to fellow classmates because a few people from my course actually applied. Luckily enough, after the waiting time, I and another girl were actually called to do the reach and height test, a fitness test, the same day. And this is uncalled for because we were told that the examiner was ready went home. So we left the hotel, went with I think one or two other staff members, crossed the main road, and went into the main air language training facility in Dublin. Here, our house were first seen measure. And this included having to take off our shoes and just stand training as like a, a ruler, I guess. The minimal height for air language is five feet four. Then they tested our reach test and I was seated on five different airplane seats, ranged from different planes from different positions and I had to see if I could put the seat belts on no problem. And then I was uh, tested if I could like reach the fire extinguisher over the overhead bins for the luggage. Everything worked perfectly, I passed. After about a week, I finally heard back from Maryland saying that they wanted to know a bit more of my background, do some background checks. To do this, you basically had to register on the careers website, which I've already done, so that was perfect. And we just kept on emailing back and forth, me and the HR for the recruitment. They contacted my references, the ones I gave them, so one of my college teachers and a fellow employer, and asked me to hand deliver some documents to get signatures. No one here stressful, it was just the documents that I used for my references, so I got one signed by my teacher. Then I had to provide a digital copy of my passport, my documents, and my proof of address, so I just sent an email which each of these scanned, as well as the CV that I'd given on the day. I could really go deeply into writing a CV and I, yeah, definitely could in another video, but whew, next, there was a really long and tedious process to get my dad DAA. This is a security company that is mainly found in Dublin Airport. I basically had to provide all my details again, all my proofs of addresses, my bank account, etc. to them, as well as provide every address I've ever lived in. And this is a bit tedious because I've uh, lived in, I think, six or seven places some of them in Poland, some of them in Ireland, etc. So, a lot of addresses. Once everything was fine, I received a six digit number and was given a gap letter to send to a person that knew me. I sent this to my friend because a gap letter cannot be filled by a family member, a relative, or a teacher. It's a letter of kind of reference of a person that knew you for really long and what they actually think about you deeply. So, I sent this to my friend, then he just scanned it on the scanner and sent me back a copy. I sent this copy back to the HR and she was happy with it. That's, that's all you need to do, is just scanning and sending. Once this is received, they send you an email with some legal information that needs to be printed and signed. This is a bit different form, and this needs to be hand signed and delivered to the ID Centre in Dublin. But, I chose a different route, I chose to post it, which was a bit more money and took a bit more time, but I didn't feel like driving to Dublin. Once everything was fine and the ID centre approved you, like confirmed the details, you were given a link to register for Garda vetting. And Garda vetting is a process in Ireland where the guards, the police, do background checks on you to check if you're able to work with kids and work in kind of uncertain environments. This is just a five year background check with some things, you know, criminal records, etc. I didn't really worry about that, I knew I was going to pass. Once this is fine and the guard at 
which is back to you. You will receive a date for your medical exam. And let me just hold on for a second. Bear in mind, I'm talking about this in a very short time period, but it actually took like months, this whole process. And so many forms, so many legalities. It was not stressful, it was just time consuming. So back to the medical exam. It took place in Metamark, and this is in the vicinity of Dublin Airport. It's a really short drive from Durban Terminal 2, and it's a building scene in Metamark. It's not run by Aer Lingus, but teachers, airplane staff all get tested there. So, upon reaching Metamark, I received a big A4 sheet with like different conditions based on family conditions, etc. And I had to check and just check mark whichever ones I had. I didn't have any, which is great stuff for them. They didn't have to worry about that. Then they gave me a cup and told me to fill, out, fill it up with a urine sample. After that, I was seated again and I brought this cup back to a nurse or a doctor. I, she didn't tell me who she was. She checked this, everything was pretty good. And she confirmed that this is my passport scanned it. Next, I was told by a different nurse and my height, my weight, and my blood pressure was all measured there on the spot. And this is filled out to check my BMI, check if I'm healthy, if I'm able to work for Aer Lingus, let's say. Then my heartbeat was tested and my eyesight plus my hearing. The eyesight test was pretty interesting. I was given these kind of binoculars which I surrounded my whole face I couldn't see outside of and I had to read out the letters I saw on digital slides. Really interesting compared to like the stuff that we're all used to. I passed that. Then my hearing test that this was a bit problematic. I was put into a small soundproof little cubicle, it was tiny, and given these massive headphones. And each ear was tested at a time. So it started with my left ear, I believe. It started with a really low frequency beep and the frequencies went up and changed their high pitch tones and I had to click a clicker every time I heard the beep. So beep, beep, etc. Even if I didn't technically hear the beep, but I heard it, I was allowed to press it. This is repeated in my other ear. And why I say it was the hardest part is because for me at least, it took approximately 10 minutes, which is a long time for a single test and just to like remain focused on one single test of looking for the beeps. But I passed that, then I went to the aviation doctor and he basically, and he basically like checked my heartbeat again, tested my ears, tested my breathing and done some like other just exams touching my body and stuff. Everything was cool and when I like I passed he printed it, we just had like a bit of a chat it was really, really nice and really calming. I didn't feel uncomfortable in any of these medical exams. When I passed, he gave me a document that certified me to be able to fly for the next five years as cabin crew. And this is amazing. It makes me able to fly with any other airline. It doesn't have to be Aer Lingus. And I did not have to pay for any of this myself. Bear in mind, none of this application cost me money apart from the postage and transport to Dublin and back. And I'm pretty much done with the whole application. Once Aer Lingus receives the details, it will normally get back to you through a phone call and just tell you congratulations, you got the job. Your position is going to be from here to here. The train is going to take place over five weeks, etc. And you're going to get money during your training camp. Give you a rundown of what's going to happen. You can send you this an email as well, but most people get it through a phone call and phone calls, this is very important. Erling just called me between 2 and 5 p.m., maybe six times during this whole application process. And he just got some extra details, got a feel for me, got a feel for my voice, my personality, my um, nature, if I'm calm, if I'm aggressive, if I'm peaceful, etc. And it's very, very crucial that you answer all of these calls and just be yourself. Don't try to put on personality, they will know and that is it. This has been my video, my long extended detailed video on how to work as cabin crew for Aer Lingus. Hope you have enjoyed and if you did, please like, subscribe and check out my Instagram. I post really great pictures daily. Thank you for watching.